there are some situations where you need to do some coordination with other disciplines. Let's say if you are modeling a structural model, you would like to coordinate it with the architectural model or with the electrical model, for example. In that case, we need to do some beam coordination and we can use different tools to see how model fits with the other ones. There are many popular tools that many of us are using like Solibri or Beam Collab Zoom or Navisworks. But in case you were not aware about this, you can also do that now with the Blender Beam add-on. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. As you can see here on my screen, I have my Blender Beam session started and you actually don't need to do anything. You don't need to load a project or create a project. You can just directly link projects. But at the same time, like I personally model something structural, I would load it first and then link the other models and see how they look. But in this video, I'll cover how to link multiple models. And one of the biggest advantages with the Blender Beam add-on is that it loads incredibly large IFC files, meaning that you can now finally deal with these bigger models that maybe you could not load before because I've seen this happening a lot of time and not only that this is also highly performant it will just take longer the first time but then every time it will load instantly and how that happens I will show you immediately after I show you how to link these files so let's go and try and do that. When you launch Blender Beam, you'll have this interface right here. Like I said, you don't need to create or load, but if you want to use your existing model, then you will need to load it. But just to link, you go here in the project setup and links, right? Then link IFC. From here, you go to your folder where you have your models. And in my case, I'll choose the architectural one and the structural and the electrical one, like I said and I will click on linked. The first time it will take a bit longer because it's processing everything. But during this process, few files are created, actually two different files where this information is stored. And I'll show you briefly after they are created. So you'll get a better picture about what's happening. A few hours later. All right, so now we have our model loaded. So let's have a look where they are. Let's take, for example, this one right here and let's just use frame selected to go to it. And there we go, guys. There is, no, there are our models. All of them, right? We can see this is the electrical stuff. This is the architectural stuff and the structural is at the bottom, I guess. But we can also use these tools right here to just make visible only the models that we want. We can do that. We have three things that we can do. So let's say if I want to make visible only the structural one, this is uh, the structural one, right? Looks as it's supposed to look. Uh, and then let's see the architectural one. It's here. And the electrical one. It's important to note though that for the time being is not possible to run a clash detection between these models inside this tool. You can do it separately and I'll show you another time, but you cannot do it through this functionality right here. What else can we do here? It's let's see toggle link visibility. Okay. Between a solid or wireframe. So if I keep only the, um, let's say the structural and the, um, architecture one let's make wireframe from architecture one and yeah it's not so nice because we have a lot of meshes in here and it's a good practice actually to see what are the very detailed elements that are making our models uh, slow and if you want to toggle between the selectability of a model you have to click on this cursor right here so let's say for example if i click on architecture one here the other, the other way around, we can see that I cannot click on this footing right here. I can click only on the architectural mode. So yeah, this is how it works. Now let me show you in the background what's happening. Let's go to the folder. And if we sort this by name, let's see the model that we use, right? We use the architectural one, and which is this one right here. This is the IFC model. And we see two additional files right here. One is called IFC Cache Blend and one IFC Cache SQLite, which is a kind of database library for Blender Beam. The Blend 
file. This is the default format for Blender. And that's exactly what this is using behind the scene when it's loading. And now let me show you how quickly this goes when I am loading again. Because we have these files right here, right? So going back to Blender BIM, I will just create a new session and I will go again to links, go to my folder. I will take architectural, structural and electrical and link again and there we go it loaded instantly you see this is very very powerful and to make sure that we got the same yeah there we go these are our models yes so this is the huge difference the first time it will take more time for these files to be processed and then you will be able to load them much quicker and if I remember correctly, Dion Molt has tested this with models as large as one gigabyte. That's crazy. And I did not test this myself, but I've seen the test and it looks very, very promising. Of course, there is a need for more features so that we can use this as a fully workflow for beam coordination. But I'm sure this is on the roadmap and there is a lot of interest for this. If you think this is an exciting topic that you are interested in, make sure that you are following my videos because I'm following this very closely with Dian and when something new will come out I will make sure to update.